Okay, here's a list of the five best pine trees for growing in Tennessee, in my opinion. And they're all native to the southeastern United States. I'll talk more about that later. But first, this one, spruce pine. Kind of an unusual name. It's obviously not a spruce tree, it's a pine tree. But some unique features about this are that it's very hard to find. <clears throat> it's more shade tolerant than a lot of pine trees. And its trunk is not really the kind of brown, chunky texture that you normally see on pine trees when it gets larger and older. It's more of a smoother gray color, somewhat reminiscent of an oak tree. So it's considered to be one of the prettiest pines you can grow. Right now it doesn't really look like much in this small state. But I was impressed with the fact that this was the top of the tree at the beginning of the growing season and now it's put on over a foot of growth in the first year that I've had it in the ground. The other interesting thing about this species is that it's native to, well its natural range is southern Alabama, southern Georgia, northern Florida. You would think it's a warm adapted pine but it tolerated the cold winter very well. So if you can get your hands on spruce pine, the Latin name Pinus glabra, I recommend finding it. I got this from mailordernatives.com and uh, I haven't seen them online since then, so they are very difficult to obtain. Unless maybe you live in the area where they grow naturally. Moving on. Next up is pitch pine, which is actually native to Tennessee. It grows wild in the northeastern parts of the state. Not here in Middle Tennessee, but it grows just fine here. And it's put on an impressive amount of growth, possibly close to a foot of vertical growth and some nice horizontal branching as well. I am having to stake it up just a little to make sure that it's going straight, but so far I'm very impressed with it. The uh, Latin name for pitch pine is Pinus rigida, and the needles have three. So that's also kind of different from some other pines around here. Three per bundle, I should say. This pine is going to be very rugged very resistant to uh, any type of pathogen, tolerant of adverse growing conditions and soil types. And I got this from someone who was selling pine trees on Etsy, actually. And that's like not a bad place to find some hard to find plants every now and then. I think they were growing this in New York, but it's very well adapted to here, obviously, because it's growing quite well. So pitch pine, try to find it online somewhat rare. Okay, slightly less rare is the slash pine. And this is a relatively small specimen. It's a really long trunk. And I got this from forestfarm.com, but there are a number of different online sellers of slash pine. Similar to the spruce pine earlier, this one grows in the southern reaches of the southern states, but it tolerates the Tennessee climate just fine without any problem. Latin name is Pinus eliadii, and this tree is not going to really be useful for screening because it does kind of grow tall with all of the foliage at the top, but for shade, one day, it could be really good. This is the Virginia pine, Pinus virginiana, and I got this from, once again, someone selling trees on Etsy. Even though this is native to not only Tennessee as a whole, but Middle Tennessee in particular, I can find these growing on dry, rocky outcrops along rivers and creeks. Anywhere where it's too dry or too harsh for the local oaks and maples to survive, this Virginia pine can survive there. So that should give you an idea of just how rugged this tree is. It's going to be a little bit more scrubby in growth habit, and it'll keep lower branches, so it could be useful for screening. And its needles actually come in bundles of two. This would be considered the toughest, hardiest pine in, to grow in Middle Tennessee. If you think there's no way I can grow a pine, I would say get Virginia pine. Because this is going to be a really tough, tough tree to kill. And it's put on a lot of growth too. I think it was down here at the beginning of the year. That's over a foot, multiple branchings. It's really unbelievable how fast it grows. And I honestly wasn't expecting it to grow that fast. So pleasantly surprised. 
watch out to make sure you have a single leader going up here. I did trim one branch here to make sure it doesn't get any wild ideas about having two leaders. I'll show you another one. Here's another Virginia pine. Probably going to stake this middle one up just to make sure it doesn't lean at any strange angles. And this one put on a lot of growth. So Virginia pine, highly recommended. Now last but not least, the loblolly pine. And these specimens are about 25 or more feet tall. And they've been growing for about five growing seasons. And they were five feet tall when I planted them. So averaging four to five feet growth per year, vertical. Loblolly pine does grow naturally in Tennessee, although not usually in Middle Tennessee, but when planted here, it performs phenomenally. And I would say it's gotta be the fastest growing out of all the pines we've looked at here. Possibly not useful for screening because it does self prune and the lower branches will lose their needles and die. But if you're looking for shade, uh, evergreen canopy above your garden or above your yard, Loblolly would probably be the best choice. The Latin name for Loblolly pine is Pinus taeda. And here's an example of what that self-pruning looks like. This branch here, all the needles turned brown and fell off. And if you didn't know better, you might think there's something wrong with your loblolly. But that's just what it does when the lower branches get shaded. They fall down, drop a little pine straw underneath them. This is not all from loblollies. I've got some uh, longleaf pine straw that I bought at the store. But they do drop pine needles, so there's a little bit of self-mulching. The trunk is starting to look mature on this specimen. It's got the characteristic brown, chunky, scaly trunk covering, so I would say the trunk is relatively attractive, attractive as far as uh, trunks go, assuming you can enjoy the look of a bare tree trunk. But they will get very tall. In Middle Tennessee, possibly not as tall as some places like East Tennessee or West Tennessee where the soil is deeper and richer but expect them to get quite tall if you plant them in Middle Tennessee and quickly. Okay, honorable mention to this pine, the Vanderwolf Pyramid, <clears throat> available at Lowe's and Home Depot. And also, by the way, the Loblollies are widely available online. Forgot to mention that. This one, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it as far as a rock solid tree because I did lose one to root rot and I think this is kind of a marginal location to plant them. Probably they're better suited for a, a location out west that's drier and cooler. But I'm trying to grow a few and only lost one so far so if you're feeling adventurous, Vanderwolf Pyramid, which is a Pinus um, strobiformis I believe, southwestern white pine. And here's the only non-North American pine tree I have in my collection. This small Japanese white pine, Pinus parviflora. And I got this from conifercingdom.com. And it is grafted onto Pinus strobiformis, southwestern white pine rootstock. So same as the Vanderwolf Pyramid. And in general, pines from outside of North America are very susceptible to the pine wilt nematode, which is a, um, it's a, it's a nematode. It's a small creature carried in the gut of the pine beetle. So when the pine trees get large enough to attract the attention of the pine beetle, it can bite the tree, transmit the nematode into the vascular tissue, the veins in the tree's trunk that carry water from the roots to the foliage, and they will block that flow of water and cause the entire tree to die suddenly. And I've seen this happen in multiple examples of Japanese black pine, scotch pine, Austrian pine, around Middle Tennessee. They'll attain a, a medium size, probably just large enough to make you happy with them, and then the pine wilt nematode will attack, and they're dead within a few weeks. So that's why I say stick to North American pines at least, but ideally stick to the first five that I showed you because they're native to the southeastern United States and completely resistant to the pine wilt nematode. So that will be some good 
long-term insurance for your investment in your pine trees.